Sit up. Sit up. Tentunya oleh sumber daya penelitian di pataran yang beragam. Kedua kata itu dari pemerintahan berbagai pihak di dalam dan di luar negeri untuk bersama-sama mengembangkan ilmu pengetahuan sosial dan kemampuan. As you can see from the video that uh, uh, LIPI, Indonesian Institute of Sciences, is not only uh, or mainly researching on natural sciences, but uh, we see from this video that there are a number of research activities uh, dealing with social activities uh, and humanities that uh, mostly have been done like uh, by our research center, Research Center for Society and Culture. And also, as you can see from the video, that this center was established. Terus uh, terang itu aku nggak tahu apa apa kecuali sorry. dulu nonton quiz Galileo. And also, as you can see from the video, that the center was established in 1986. Uh, uh, previously, it was uh, uh, like uh, there are two division. Like NAS, lembaga. What is that, Mbak Wija? Like NAS and uh, LRKN, right? Uh, there are two research center in Indonesia, lembaga riset kebudayaan nasional dan lembaga riset uh, ekonomi nasional, if I'm not mistaken. So, these two center in 19, uh, in 1960, uh 1986 was uh, uh were merged into one uh, into uh into uh, what you call it like a division of humanities and social sciences uh part of the LIPI. and then this uh division uh having like uh, five research center and then a research center for society and culture is one of them and uh, 
uh, in terms of the number of researchers, we have uh, around 50 or 60 researchers at our center and also number of uh, uh, like administrative staffs and also some other uh, people who help us in conducting research activities. And uh, besides uh, personnel, historically, uh, research center of society and culture, uh, perhaps we can say that we have uh, a number of uh, rule and influences in Indonesian society. One of uh, prominent figure from this center that uh, perhaps you know his name, but perhaps not associating him with the center is Nurholis Majid. He was part of the center until uh, perhaps uh, he received his uh, professorship from UEN Jakarta, and then after that, uh, he became he became active as a, an activist of no, no modernist Islam, and no longer active at uh, Libby. And uh, there are a number of uh, good researchers uh, uh, coming from this center, like uh, Muhammad Sobari. Uh, he was uh, director of Antara. Uh, Indonesian uh, uh, press, uh, uh, and then also there is um, uh, Pisri Sansuri, Pisri FND, sorry, Pisri FND. Uh, he was uh, like conducting research on also on uh, indigenous religions, minority groups, and also uh, local communities in Indonesia. We have also a big name like uh, Meli Ketan, uh, and now she is still active at uh, IP, Association of Indonesian Academic. And also we have um, uh, Chaliswari Primordia Wardani, who is now uh, at KSP, staff uh, official, uh, Kantor staff president, the office of uh, presidential staff. And also we have uh, Riwanto Tirto Sudarmo, uh, previous uh, head of uh, our center, uh, who is active uh, conducting research on several issues. Uh, uh, one of them is on uh, religious minorities also. And uh, tonight uh, we invited several uh, people from our center who will give you uh, information about some activities that we have been conducting at our research center. The first one is uh, uh, Dr. Vijayanti uh, Santoso. She is uh, the editor in chief of our journal, uh, Journal Masyarakat Budaya. This is one of, uh, I think, the best journal at Lipi uh, with uh, the highest number of citations. And it was uh, established in 1997 and continuously, this, uh, this journal has been continuously published until now. And uh, also we have um, Ibn Nadir, uh, his uh, research ma mainly on media and digital, what you call it, digital world, something like that. And also we have, uh, well, uh, Pak uh, Dedi Aduri, uh, his research is on maritime and also ethnicity, if I'm not mistaken. And Mas Dr. Khairul Muktafa, uh, he is one of our bright uh, scholar, researcher at LIPI. His research is on citizenship uh, and he, he is the, the leader of the uh, a team that uh, now conducting research on uh, citizenship, religion, and citizenship in, Indone in Indonesia. We have also Rani Rastati. Uh, she is the leader of the web team at uh, our center. And uh, her uh, research activities is mostly on cosplay. Do you know what it means? Cosplay, cosplay is a costume and play. Uh, it's like uh, mostly popular in Japan. And uh, now, because uh, I think uh, when I was in uh, Barcelona a few, uh, I think two years ago, there was a, a long line of people waiting to see a cosplay in uh, Barcelona. That's one of the impact of the Japanese culture in the world, I think. And also we have uh, 
who else? Mbak Wija and then Pak Dedi and then uh, uh, we have here also Bu Henny. Uh, her research, uh, her research activities is mostly on urban uh, development and uh, smart city and something like that. And also we have uh, uh, several people from our center that uh, will perhaps share their activities at, at, at the center. First of all, I think I would like to invite uh, Mbak Wija to talk about uh, the journal Masyarakat Budaya. And then after that, uh, I will ask uh, Rani, uh, the leader, the team leader of the website of LIPI, of, uh, of uh, Research Center for Society and Culture. Mbak Wija, can you talk uh, a few minutes about uh, our journal? Uh. Thank you very much, uh, Pak Najib, for uh, very best introductions in this night, <laughs> at least. Uh, I will share my presentation. Uh, where is my presentation? Uh, this is my presentation. Uh, I would like to uh, uh, show that uh, this is uh, our uh, journal. Uh, this will this the the cover would be maybe uh, for uh, next year or next two years would be our new cover and you can uh, uh, access the journal through the uh, uh, link uh, below. Uh, our journal is, uh, this is the, uh, if you open the link and then you will find uh, the introduction to our journal. Uh, this is the, the background of our journal. And actually, uh, Every every uh, we have we, we always have three uh, uh, three what do you call percetakan uh, per year and every uh, every issues there would be uh, eight art articles and one book review. Uh, most of our theme is based on Indonesian case and uh, but the author may discuss theory, perspective, and method. And this is mostly asked a uh, question by uh, 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 people uh, who like who would like to uh, submit the uh, paper because they always say, "What is uh, what if our uh, 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 submission is theoretical? Is it okay? Is it okay as long as you have a discussion of the theory on Indonesian case?" So we would we would have Indonesian in every. Uh, every uh, articles in our journal. And then based on theory, perspective, and method, and this is all up to the, uh, the author. And we have uh, ac internal activities and external collaborations. In internal activities, we always uh, very active in seminar and workshop within the social science in LIPI. We always support the program in LIPI. And uh, for viewers, we have like a writing workshop because we like to have uh, good articles and we also like to, to facilitate good authors. And then uh, we accept both uh, Indonesian and English uh, articles. Although at this moment, the journal increased the English articles as the requirement of the respect for Scopus index. So we would like to increase our index uh, uh, to Scopus index, but uh, if we like to do that, we have to, uh, we have to see the Ristek Dikti administrative who like to, who won, who won Indonesian journal written in English gitu. And forgetting that Indonesians, uh, uh, per Peraturan Menteri Indonesia uh, Pendidikan Kebudayaan Number 42, 2018, uh, is language is our identity. So actually, uh, maybe it's like a, a internal critics to the journal. Uh, we, we like to uh, support the English version of our journal, but we still think that Indonesian's uh, written article is also important. 
and then uh, in this case uh, we we try to remember we try to uh, impose that uh, UC Indonesian language is also important as it is a policy of Indonesian too. For external collaboration, we, we have like uh, several activities at this moment. Say for example, with UGM, uh, we publish selected papers on their uh, uh, seminar and workshop. Although it still have to uh, consistently uh, use our template 6,000 to 8,000 words. And then uh, also uh, blind peer review. And we also uh, have a, a collaboration with uh, anthrop anthropological associations uh, for one spe special issue. So we have three issues per year and one issue is uh, a special. So we open for uh, something new, something uh, like, for example, uh, next year we will have uh, uh, with common uh, of the issue of Taripang. Uh, and then uh, at this moment, we also have uh, ISRL uh, Kemenak uh, collaborations. Uh, maybe uh, uh, this is the uh, this is the 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 achievement the achievement of our journal. So we, we, we you can all see that we have Sinta two score, uh, also the JOIJ, uh, the Google Scholar, and then. Uh, this is what we like to increase uh, to the Scopus one. We like to fight, but we still have to uh, uh, try to have more citation for from the international or global uh, authors. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Panajib. My presentation is very quick. Thank you, Mbak Wija. That's a good presentation. And uh, as you see from this, uh slide that uh, the number of citation of uh, Jurnal Masyarakat Budaya, this one is already 738 uh, citations, and this one is the highest at the uh, Division of Humanities and Social Sciences at the And this is, this journal is already 20, 23 years old, 20 years of disseminating knowledge. So this one is, uh, if uh, for instance, you wanna like, uh, uh, what you call it, like uh, pass uh, S3, PhD degree in Indonesia, I think sending your article to this uh, journal is already uh, fulfill the requirement to, to get uh, a degree, uh, S3 degree, PhD degree. <laughs> Uh, uh, so that's uh, the information of uh, our journal and we invite you uh, to send your best article to this journal to get it published, to get it uh, uh, wider audience, not only among uh, Indonesian people, but perhaps also from people from foreign countries. And then the next one is I would like to invite our uh, young, bright and uh, I think brilliant researcher Rani Astati, and is, she is very innovative in uh, like uh, what you call it in modifying our website to become very beautiful, trendy, and also attracting perhaps uh, many authors to write in our journal. And it is not only what you call it. Uh, uh, rely on the content but also the performance i think also very good i would like uh, rani to share the information about our site and also social media what you call it uh, social media platform that we have rani time is yours. Hey, thank you mas najib for your introduction i'm going to share some i'm going to share screen can everybody see my screen right now? Yeah. All right, good evening everyone. My name is Rani Rastari. I am a website and social media coordinator as well as a researcher at Center for Society and Culture Indonesian Institute of Sciences. 
So I would like to express my gratitude to the committee for this opportunity to share our center activities. Today, I would like to introduce our official social media account like Facebook account and fan page, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube channel and website. You can hit us up via email website pmblp at gmail dot com for article or opinion submission or to pmb at mail.lipi.go.id for institutional purposes such as internship fellowship and opportunity for collaboration all right this is our official facebook fan page but unfortunately a technical error occurred last week so we could not access and do updates on both our facebook account and fan page so we decided to create a new second official account with the same name as the previous one. The new account look like this. So please follow, like, and add our Facebook account for updated information about our center. We provide information on the current publication of our researchers, upcoming events, and other information related to research. And this is our official Twitter account and YouTube channel. You can watch our previous webinar here and just look at the video list and you can find videos on PMB profile and documentary films such as Kao North Maluku, Pago, Pagu and Oirata Indigenous People. Next is our Instagram account. This is the most active social media we have. Monday to Sunday, 24-7. You can mention us, send us a direct message, etc. We will happy to respond to your inquiries. And now I'm moving on to our official website. Recently, we've just updated the theme and display. So now it looks more fresh, clean, at the same time modern. Our website provides a variety of information such as article opinion and the latest news and recent publication and upcoming events, webinar recording, research cluster, researchers profile. We also connected all social media and things related to PMB, PMB Lipi, such as Jurnal Masyarakat Budaya, Culinary Encyclopedia Dapur Rakyat, and Forest Management Database. If you could not find certain information on our website, please note that currently we are still maintaining our website content. So we will add various information periodically or just send us an, e an email if you need information that not available on our website. And since July, 2020, our website already registered and has an ISSN number. So we decided to publish a website article or opinions to scientific e-magazine. Uh, our e-magazine name is Masyarakat and Budaya. This is basically a collection of articles from our website. We collected and published website articles to monthly edition. We publish two numbers a month, each numbers each number contain one to three articles written by PMB researchers, either academician from other institution and also general public. The number of articles depends on the article submission and selection from the editorial board. This is how it looks like inside. There's information on the editorial board, table of contents and articles itself. We distribute this e-magazine to all writers, PMB researchers, and also to the public. If you interested to contribute, contribute to our website, please send us your article about 800 to 1,000 words. The opinion has never been published before and no plagiarism. Issues related to PMB LP research cluster, which are religious and philosophy studies, 
social ecology, law and society, and multiculturalism. Please add your short bio and close up photo and send your article no later than December 1st, 2020. We will provide certificate and we will send you Masyarakat and Budaya magazine. So basically your article and our opinion will be published on our website as well as our e-magazine. A part of disseminating activities, a website PMB Lipi also conduct training for capacity building. There are three types of workshops held by our team, which are open for public, internal participant, and team member only. PMB Lipi also organized various events, both national and international scale. Last week, we've just finished holding an international symposium in collaboration with university in Japan. And for national scale, we organized book review and discussion. This is our newest program in its cultural discussion forum initiated by our director, Mas Najib. This is the weekly forum that held on Monday and open for public. We also hold national seminar in collaboration with various institution and university. If you're interested in collaborating with PMBLEP, do not hesitate to contact us at email pmb at mail.lipi.go.id we are looking forward to have a fruitful collaboration with all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rani, uh, for an excellent presentation. And uh, now I think we need to move to the, the main activities, uh, the core activities of the research center, which is uh, research itself. Uh, we have several. We have several teams within our center, and one of them is um, research on maritime and ethnicity. Uh, and perhaps some people will ask us, uh, what is the difference between research in LIPI and research, for instance, conducted by uh, the Ministry of Religious Affairs? Oh, uh, research conducted by uh, like universities in Indonesia. And now I would like to invite pa, pa, our senior researcher, pa, Dr. Eddie Aduri. Uh, he is a very prolific uh, uh, scholar and has uh, published a number of international journals and uh, very dedicated in conducting research on maritime and have uh, been collaborating with many international scholars on, uh, on the issues uh, in writing and conducting research on maritime. I would like to give the time to Pa Deji Aduri. Masih off, Pak. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Thank you for the kind words, uh, kind introduction word, Mas Najib. Uh, please allow me to share my uh, screen to show you the some slides that I have prepared for this uh, presentations. So as Mas Najib mentions, I am part of the so within the research center of. Uh, culture and society and culture, we have several uh, study groups. One of which is the, what we call it is as a maritime study group, uh, which of course, as its name implies, the study of our group focuses on uh, maritime issues. Let me start with introducing this uh, group. Yeah, The group uh, was established by the late professor Adrian Belafian, a well-known, not only uh, Indonesians, uh, uh, within Indonesian uh, uh, scientist uh, circle, but also a global uh, uh, networks of global uh, academic worlds. 
uh, Pak Labian was a, a maritime historians. Uh, so this uh, research center was established by him. Uh, not research center, sorry. Uh, uh, maritime study group was established by him in 1990. In 1990. And uh, now we have only uh, seven people uh, active uh, working in this uh, maritime study group, myself, Dedi Adhuri, Masuri Imron, Ari Wahyono, Sidiono, Ratna Indrawasi, Anissa Ratri, and Tari Indra Budi. So only so, so far, I mean, the, the, the core members of this uh, group is uh, seven uh, people, but uh, in uh, our research, we also collaborate uh, with other centers within the division or uh, of uh, social science and humanities, and also uh, collaboration with different uh, 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 the natural wings of LIPI, as well as other uh, non-LIPI uh, uh, organization or institutions. Yeah. Now let me start uh, telling you about the topics or this, the studies that we have been doing particularly since I joined this uh, study group, so in uh, early 1990s. One of the issues that we have covered is uh, what we call it as hak ulayat in Bahasa Indonesia, that is the uh, issues of marine tenure, which is associated uh, with community-based uh, or traditional marine resource management. In the, uh, the early stage of our work, we covered three different uh, provinces. The study covered three different provinces, Maluku, Papua, and Sangitaha Talaud. So that was in early 1990s. But as the time went on, we also covered uh, the same issues in different parts of Indonesia as far as Aceh uh, on uh, well-known uh, uh, traditional marine resource management called uh, Panglima Laut, for example. Uh, the, the prominent or main uh, or important findings of us is uh, for this from this study is the uh, two concepts uh, that was uh, that were used as the foundations of the uh, uh, marine tenures in uh, uh, particular in Papua and in Maluku. That is the concept of Petuana. That's the, the concept of uh, territoriality, claim of uh, territorial ownership to the uh, offer the coastal waters. Uh, we, with that work, we identify the type of rights, right holder unit, and uh, the legitimacy, the legitimations or source of legality of that particular practices. The second concept that we uh, revealed with this research is the, the practice of SASI, that is kind of a system of village rule and a ritual pertaining to temporal prohibitions of use of particular resources or territory. So I will not uh, discuss in detail what that concept constitutes, but let me uh, just uh, highlight what kind of contributions uh, we uh, uh, develop or we uh, provide from that kind of studies. First, at the theoretical contributions, we uh, this research has added a concept of marine tenure into the scope of traditional marine resource management, particularly in Papua and Maluku. The earlier uh, discourse on this focused more on this, the SASI, that is the second concept, and it was uh, uh, neglecting the, the uh, discussion of SASI of the Petuanan. So our studies adding to uh, that uh, discourse. The uh, second uh, contribution, theoretical condition of this study is adding the social issue into the communal tenure concept. If you look at the uh, Western discussions of uh, communal tenure, for example, they assume that all the rights are distributed to the all member of the community. But our study shows that it was not the case if you look at the uh, practices in Maluku or Papua. We also are highlighting the fact that uh, the traditional tenure as well as the traditional resource management is also uh, can also be a subject of elite capture, which is this kind of perspective, uh, you know, try to correct the uh, romanticism 
toward the traditional marine resource management practices. So at the practical level, what we have contributed with these uh, studies is that we use the, the result of the studies for kind of uh, supporting the rights of the community or advocating the right of the uh, communities, coastal communities, traditional uh, uh, communities offer on their rights to manage their coastal waters or to manage uh, the, the, the traditional claims uh, resources. This is an example where we, I myself uh, acted as the expert witness in the judicial review of the law number 27, 2007. Uh, which has uh, articles in it which tend to marginalize coastal communities and uh, uh, traditional communities. This is another uh, practical uh, benefits or practical contribution of the studies that is uh, supporting uh, the, the, the adoptions of uh, communal, communal community rights uh, to manage their coastal waters. Uh, this is another way of using uh, our uh, uh, studies for, again, advocating the rights of uh, fishers in this particular case, where we also acted as uh, expert witness to uh, have uh, the fishers who have been criminalized in the conservation area. The second issue that we have already also copper is the, the uh, Bajo people, the culture of the sea nomads. Uh, we know this is a particularly important, uh, particularly in the context of uh, Poros Maritim, Jokowi's policy of Poros Maritim. Uh, Jokowi is in, uh, in his uh, programs advocating in the uh, program of Poros Maritim, the revitalization of uh, maritime cultures, which of course, if you talk about marine culture, we have to talk about the sea nomads. They are really the holders of maritime culture. So we have also contributed to uh, these uh, issues by uh, looking at or doing some studies on the uh, uh, Bajo people, identifying some uh, pressures, some problems they are facing, and uh, looking a, a better way to uh, support them, as well as to use their culture supporting our nations in terms of uh, getting better of better understandings of uh, maritime culture. The other issue that we cover also is the traditional sailing culture. We still have a, a, a traditional sailing in Indonesia. This, this is the last uh, national uh, wide uh, research conducted by Compass showing that about uh, in 2016, we have uh, still have around more than 1,000 ships sailing uh, across Indonesia. We can see uh, it's still connecting uh, several places in Indonesia. This is the traditional uh, boat uh, making in uh, Bira, South Sulawesi. We also covered, and uh, in fact, we just published a book on uh, this traditional uh, sailing traditions. Uh, this month, uh, you can see from the uh, 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 contents, uh, we are trying to, you know, uh, understand the cultural aspects of these traditions. We have also covered uh, uh, some contemporary issues. Yeah, for example, we look at the uh, issues on coastal communities and disasters. We contributed to, to the study and actually the rehabilitations of uh, coastal community in post uh, uh, tsunami rehabilitation in Aceh. We also try to understand the coastal communities adaptations to climate change, uh, quite hot issues in the last two decades or so. We also covered uh, issues pertaining to uh, impact uh, of uh, and community responses to COVID-19, for example. Again, okay, this is um, another research that we covered. This research is action research, action oriented research. So the output of the research is kind of a model of uh, for community empowerment in terms of coastal management as well as coastal based livelihood developments. This is really 
for practical reasons, supporting coastal communities, developing uh, or increasing their welfare through uh, a coastal a better coastal management and life development. As a closing remarks, again, if we look at what we have covered so far, we tend to focus more on natural resource management perspective or issues and some issues pertaining to uh, sailing and uh, 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 contemporary issues as, as disasters. Yeah, We haven't done uh, research on more classical issues such as uh, belief system, religiousities, and so on. For example, it, there are some interesting questions in that matter that we would like to cover. For example, up, up in most places, even in Eastern Indonesia, where uh, the uh, distribution of or the numbers of uh, Muslims and Christians uh, population uh, are dominated by Christian, for example, we can see that coastal uh, or coastal based livelihoods, particularly fishing livelihoods, uh, is the livelihoods uh, conducted more by um, a Muslim community rather than by Christian community, for example. Of course, that's a quite interesting question why that happens. Again, if we are talking about religiosity, uh, uh, major uh, religions, I believe, or I think, is more uh, a terrestrial perspective or terrestrial dominated perspective. Uh, uh, so, for example, if we are considering uh, the fact that fishers working on different time schedule, as well as working in a very small, narrow territory, for example, how they can perform salad, for example, that kind of questions are uh, also interesting to, to look at too in our research. But that is what we are considering to, uh, for uh, our future research. Another thing that I would like also to mention is we are inviting more collaborations to develop with uh, other institutions within LIPI as well as outside of LIPI to work more on uh, the, the existing uh, topic that have been uh, covered so far by our research, but also extended to other uh, topics that we haven't uh, uh, covered. I think that's all. Thank you very much. I uh, return the floor to you, Pak Mas Najib. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Pak Deddy, for... You are muted. Your microphone is muted, uh, Mas Najib. Mas Najib, you are muted. muted. Hello. Uh, thank you, Pak Deti, for your uh, very informative and also excellent presentation. As uh, you already know, that uh, Indonesia is a maritime country. And our dedication to do research on the issue of maritime is, uh, I think one of them is uh, to help uh, and strengthen the identity and characters of our nation, Indonesia. And uh, we have, uh, uh, and our focus on the maritime studies is on cultural issues. It's not uh, something that perhaps related to the fishing itself or to the fish itself or something, uh, the product of the sea, but the culture of the maritime culture. And our next uh, presenter is uh, Ibn Nadir. Uh, he is, his research is mostly on the issue of media and digital studies. Uh, he has been active, he has been active in writing several articles like in Indonesia at Melbourne, New Mandala, uh, ISIS Perspective, and other publications, in, including some uh, very academic journal. Uh, he graduated from Amsterdam University. Uh, 
uh, I think a few years ago, and uh, now it's like uh, becoming a focal researcher on the issue of uh, media and digital studies. Time is yours, Ibnu. Thank you very much, Master Najib, for your kind introduction. Um, so, okay, I will try to share my screen first. I'm sorry. Uh, I think can co-host make me? Uh, can the host makes me co-host so I can share my screen? There's a problem with it. Um. <coughs> okay, well, let me try again. Mm. Can I send someone? Uh, my PowerPoint, so someone, maybe Rani, can you please share it for me? You can share it here. Okay, okay. Wait a Are you using chat or email? Uh, chat. I'm using my chat. OK. Uh, can someone download it and share it for me? Okay, I will download it and share screen okay. for you. Just a moment, please. I am disabled to share screen. Maybe host can help us because I am uh, not a co-host. I cannot open the file. It's corrupted. Could you send it again, Ibnu? Okay. okay. No, no, no. I can open. Your file name is Media Research. Yeah. Yes. And, yes, and that one. You can open it, Rani. I cannot yes. open it here. It's... I'm trying to open it right now. Can everybody see my share screen? Yes, we can yeah, see. Yeah. It. Okay. Um, thank, okay. Thank you very much, Rani. No problem. Here you go. Um, could you make it larger? Okay, um, so yeah, uh, my presentation would be more general uh, mapping about digital research in contemporary Indonesia because I believe that um, our work at Pambility is part of the racing, uh, racing progress on research about uh, the internet use in uh, Indonesian context. Next slide, Ren. So the question is, how do the use of internet plays a role in the social cultural changes uh, in contemporary Indonesia? Um, there are at least, I believe, uh, four topics that is uh, relevant to the general trend of uh, Indonesian research, but also to our work that has been done in, in PMBLP. Next one. 
So this is timeline. Um, if you see, if you're familiar that um, in 1990s, we know that uh, some mailing lists and warnet uh, was used to uh, propagate information. I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you. Um, propagate information as a tool of resistance against uh, new order. And then um, during around 1998 to 2000, we know that website and mailing list uh, is used by Laskar Jihad and also its counterparts from the Christian organization as a tool to mobilize uh, religious Id and identity politics. Around 2002, uh, there were a lot of internet companies that due to dot-com bubbles uh, fell down, uh, being bankrupt. And then that was started of the uh, digital economy in Indonesia. And then in 2008, we know that uh, many researchers wrote about social media as a tool for social and political protests. For example, uh, on the case of Prita against the Omni International, and also Chichak versus Boy at the time that was the first um, online mobilization in Indonesia. And since 2010 and present, uh, there was a change on social media when the internet itself, the structure of internet itself changed into uh, internet 2.0, where the users of internet could now be active as producer as well. So uh, there, there, were, there is a lot of uh, disruption on religious landscapes, on political landscapes, popular cultures, uh, knowledge authorities because of social media. And we know that 2009 and present, at least uh, some scholars already notice how the state uh, is trying to have a better grip on the control of internet. Uh, next one. So yeah, uh, this is Harmoko. Um, for those who don't know, I believe every one of you know, but for those who don't know, he was a uh, minister of information back in, um, during Suharto's era. Uh, his comment was, anybody can go on the internet, there are no regulations against it. The context was uh, made when uh, Tempo decided to go online after two years prior, they were banned by Harmoko. From this statement, we knew that uh, the government didn't, didn't believe that internet was a threat against the stability of new regime because at that time, uh, internet was uh, still very small, the users is still very limited numbers, um, that that perspective will be changed much later in this current era. Next trend. So uh, as I said before, that um, one of the main topics about the internet is about online dissidence or uh, resistance how the internet is used uh, as a means for minority groups, as a means for uh, activists to uh, do resistance, to do protests against a perceived authoritarian regime. Um, uh, me, myself, has wrote uh, an article about it, about the Indonesian exiles uh, that has practices long distance resistance uh, in Netherlands using blogs and uh, mailing lists. And why, why was the internet really matters uh, as a means of resistance, at least for two reasons. The first is because the features of internet enables activists to bypass the control of government and traditional media. So for those who are familiar with the works of media at that time, uh, most of them have to have licenses from government. So uh, in order for them to get published. So at that time, the internet that doesn't need that, that kind of license could propagate information freely, including those informations that might incriminate uh, Suharto's regime. And another aspect of internet at the time that was crucial is how the internet provides activists to be protected as anonymous when uh, they were very critical against Suharto, they could uh, be protected behind the anonymity uh, of internet at that time. Next run. And then the other issues that I believe is also uh, important is um, the new media and traditional communities. As we know that um, the discussion on new media 
is often focuses on the urban society, uh, practically because uh, in Indonesia, the urban society are the ones that has better access on the internet. But some of our researchers already conducted research on the non-urban society, among which is a study from uh, my colleague, uh, Aulia Hadi, in 2018, that discussed how uh, there's a big technological gap between rural and urban communities. And this is the kind of problems that needs to be addressed uh, in the future to ensure um, proper justice, proper uh, welfare in Indonesia in the future. And the second studies is uh, conducted by uh, Anna Windarsi, also my colleague from uh, PMBLP, that has done research on the fishermen communities and sees how the use of new media benefits them uh, to gain more information that could help them um, on their day-to-day -day, uh, activities. Next one. Yeah, and so uh, this is a bit similar from the first topic, but there's change in a way that um, the landscape of internet has changed. Uh, for those who are familiar with the concept of internet 2.0, the presence of social media, basically, it provides an ability for anyone practically to publish everything, to uh, discuss everything that uh, disrupts all kinds of authorities. Um, as we know, this, is, this enables uh, more social protests that came from grassroots movement, even from those uh, who were previously didn't have any background on social activism. Uh, for example, is the case of Chichak first boy back at, uh, in 2008, when the uh, KPK uh, was practically undermined by uh, the police department. And then there was a huge movement that was initiated from Facebook page. Um, in 2011, uh, our researcher, uh, Bu Wija here as well, and uh, uh, Bu Nina and Mas Fatubi conducted research and released this to how the use of media uh, initiated to conduct the anti-corruption movement. And then, as we know that the, uh, the presence of social media also makes how uh, political activism and the activity of play is, is getting much more blurred. Uh, for example, as we know for this recent uh, mass demonstrations back in 2019, uh, in the case of Reformasi Korupsi, and also I believe the recent protests about uh, the omnibus law, we could see how uh, people use protests, people use posters uh, with humorous tones, uh, but that doesn't mean that they did not or did not do activism. They conducted activism only in much more blurred lines between uh, playfulness and the uh, political activities. And also uh, the presence of Instagram also push uh, the prominence of visual aspects uh, people use different kind of dress. People uh, use various form of posters. They would uh, upload this kind of posters uh, that would uh, make videos about it. Uh, and it also enables the rise of leaderless mass mobilization. As we know that um, there is always organizer on mass mobilization, mobilization, but it is harder to pinpoint which one is the coordinator at these days because of the characteristics of the protests in social media. Next one. Okay, another issue that I believe is important and also uh, discussed by plenty of researchers uh, at PMB is the projection of religious identity. As we know that um, Indonesia also has been experiencing uh, Islamization uh, practically post the New Order era and then the social media became an, an important platform where many religious groups projected their identities. Uh, it is prominent during the Moluccan conflict, also during the um, Pilkada DKI with Aksi 212 at that time. And then even from early on in 2002, during the Moluccan conflict, the internet has shown its capabilities in linking the local conflict to global networks. 
and also in uh, social media, the algorithm is in next generation of internet that the stronger polarization and tribalism based on religious identity. Next one. Uh, but the presence of social media isn't just contributing in the conflict and polarizations, but also the prolifer proliferation of new religious authorities. Uh, for example, this is a new book uh, organized by Pak Najib uh, with ICS at that time and uh, discusses how uh, the social media enables the rise of this new authorities or new country in this book. Um, one study, for example, discussed about Hanan Ataki conducted by my colleague, uh, Wahyudi Akmalia, that um, discussed how this Ustad, this recent Ustad, thinker de, their da'wah to be suitable with the logic of social media, with the logic of uh, youth movement. Um, so the presentation of the da'wah is equally important with the content itself. Um, and then we know that Instagram as a medium for uh, soft da'wah that combines entrepreneurship with aspiration to be pious. Um, not a, Another issue on the use of social media is how the social media could change the power structure between preachers and its audience. Previously, we know that um, audiences of, of uh, religious sermons could not easily access the preachers. But these days, with the help of WhatsApp, with the help of email, with the help of Facebook chat, um, they could ask directly personal questions to their preachers and those transform the relationships between preachers and the audiences. Next one. The other issue that is important is uh, disruption on popular cultures. Um, we know that the social media uh, make it more blurred boundaries, I think, between local and popular culture, whether in music, film, comic, and others. And there is also decentralization of popular cultures led to resurrection of traditions. Um, we are all today, for example, familiar with how uh, Japanese traditional music is getting more, much more popular with the rise of um, Didi Kempot. And previously, our colleague also studied the hybrid form of music, such as Andy X, where the rap music is combined with Koplo and gain much more popularities today. And uh, there is also amalgamation between uh, fandom uh, of football, football club and ethnic identity on digital platforms that is conducted also by my colleague, uh, Aulia Hadi. Next one. Okay, so this is the next chapter, I believe that would be uh, prominent in the uh, future research. Uh, uh, this is a statement made by Joko Widodo, our president, um, that internet should not be used to propagate fake news and hoax. Uh, the comment was made during the inauguration of Palapare. Um, one thing that I want to highlight is how the, the government has changed its perspectives uh, 20 years after the statement from around 20 years from the statement of uh, from Harmoko that today the internet is prominent, that today is the internet is important for government. So uh, there is an effort from government to control the internet, just like uh, the one that uh, New Order did to traditional media at that time. Next one. Yeah, um, so the current research is discuss how uh, the contestation of truth between state and societies. Uh, the picture is taken from Kawal COVID, for instance, this is one of the conspiracy theories about uh, COVID-19. Um, and then the, the case of conspiracy theories and hoax uh, became very prominent uh, in this period of uh, uh, time and also the topics. Um, LIPI, PMB, uh, collaborated with several other uh, research, uh, with several other research center uh, at LIPI, uh, conducted survey that uh, that demonstrates how threat of hoax, uh, in particular to people with better access of internet, uh, is very high. Uh, those with better access of internet is easier to be exposed to hoax and false information, and those they are also the ones that are uh, prone to believe those kind of informations. And then, 
we know that these days the term of hoax is getting much more politicized. Um, government use the, the term of hoax almost exclusively to the ones that is very critical to government, while um, some of the some of the part of the government also spread hoax and uh, doesn't have doesn't face similar consequences with societies. Uh, apart from that, we know that. Um, some part of government also uh, conducted gray area practices uh, where they use social media influencers, they applied internet shutdown to gain much more control on the um, social media. Next run. So this is uh, concluding remarks uh, about the future of this kind of research in the... Uh, the first thing that we need to highlight is technological features are important in shaping the social, cultural and political practices as we see how development from internet to, to internet 2.0 change a lot on um, uh, the political landscapes, the cultural landscapes and also social situations. And then we know that these days uh, there's questions on the limit of political participation on social media since government started to implement much more strong restriction on social media. Um, in the future, I believe we need more research on the impact of business and government governance in society. For instance, we are lacking the discussions on the entanglement, entanglements, entanglements of oligarchy, which are our businesses, and then the politics behind formulations of smart city program, or uh, more micro level of studies like everyday experiences of Gojek driver, or corporate culture of startup companies and other kind of issues. I think uh, that concludes uh, my presentations. Uh, thank you, thank you, Rani and uh, Mas Rajiv for the opportunity. Thank you, Ibnu, for okay, your excellent presentation. Uh, and you can see uh, from uh, his presentation that this is a very important topic and also we are dedicating on this issue. And uh, we are also hoping collaboration with some other institutes or research center in conducting uh, the topic on uh, media. And uh, the last one, but not the least, I would like to invite uh, Khoirul, Dr. Khoirul Mustafa. Uh, he just finished his PhD from Australia in 2019. Uh, his dissertation is on and uh, he is working now on uh, what you call it like uh, on the issue continuing the issue on citizenship as part of the we call it PRN uh, research national prioritas research national uh, time is yours uh, okay uh, thank you uh, uh, Mas Naji uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, selamat malam. So actually, if you look at the schedule, we are finished at 10 anyway. Now it's already uh, at 50. Uh, and to do this, I'm not going to talk. Uh, Hectic. Hello. Okay. Um, okay. I'm sorry, it's my voice quite um, sore. I just had to uh, presentation in this morning and the afternoon, quite uh, hectic anyway. Time is ticking, and then I'm not going to talk too much simply because basically, compared to other research cluster, um, the cluster of multiculturalism is quite new. So, if uh, we listen to the presentation by Pa, Teddy Athuri, basically the cluster of maritime studies has been around for almost 20 years. Even media studies, uh, we can um, um, see from the presentation, it's been around for, for at least 10 years. And the cluster of multiculturalism is quite new. Um, simply, it's just been around for two years. So basically, it's nothing too much to put on my presentations because we are currently working on several uh, projects that we can see the product maybe next year, some publication, some workshop, and so on and so forth. So I'm just going to share my um, screen to highlight some important feature of uh, our research cluster. Um,
Okay, so basically, I'm not going to um, highlight or present um, on um, certain topic on the issue of multiculturalism. I'm just going to introduce to you our new research cluster on multiculturalism that I think is quite um, important recently when you look at the, on the issue of um, uh, the, the identity of politics in um, Indonesia. So I'm just going to highlight important uh, feature um, only. So as I said, mentioned, uh, as I mentioned earlier, compared to other research cluster, this is quite new. It's founded in uh, 2018 as part of the new mainstreaming in our research center. Basically, um, <clears throat> the research on issue of culture, religion has been around in our research center, and then and that, that kind of topic has been has been characterized our research uh, center compared to other um, research center at Libby. Uh, politics, um, population, economy, even area studies. The issue of religion, the issue of language, the issue of uh, culture has been around over there. But basically, we find we found that the issue that has been studied is quite uh, varied. And then now we are going to uh, make it much more focused. And then we look at the one angle which we call as multicultural challenges. One of the issues that uh, we are um, covering currently is, um, for example, part of the challenge of the issue is like, the rising of identity politics in Indonesia that has been uh, become quite a hot discussion in the last couple of years. The issue of um, violence against minority groups and the issue of the new identity that has been forged and then seen or perceived in opposition between uh, Islam and Kafir, China and anti-China, pribumi and data and so forth and so forth. And the kind of uh, per perceiving of identity has challenged our uh, basic um, uh, nature of Indonesia, which is quite pluralistic, Pinika, Tugalika. And then the kind of identity politics that has been around, and then we can see is quite um, striking. It's colored with the uh, exclusive and essentialist nature. And then normally they will uh, be um, placed in quite uh, binary oppositions and perceived as something fixed, which in turn led to the emergence of populism. And then the issue of identity and diversity has been in the uh, sick part. <clears throat> the, the, sorry. So uh, the puzzle is basically this kind of the basic question. The puzzle is how do we navigate the challenges when we are maintaining solidarity among the citizens in the age of the politics celebrations. So basically, we, we have this kind of celebration of identity politics that's hit everywhere across Indonesia, but at the same time, we are assigned by the important task, how do we maintain the solidarity? And then another question that uh, we pose, like how do we conceptualize our normative affiliation on this issue in the era of pluricentrism? So basically we are talking about not center as singular, but we are talking about centers. So basically there is no one single center as we can see from the new order, but with the reform era, centers are everywhere. So basically the authority is not only possessed by the state, but also by the institutions uh, that are quite non-state in nature, in the religious uh, group, in the other uh, cultural association and so forth and uh, so on and so forth. So uh, some topic that are covered in our research cluster are citizenship, minority right, identity politics, religious populism, gender, um, and other similar uh, issue. <clears throat> we have conducted several activities, uh, mainly we are doing the research, and also we have um, uh, critical reading on theories. Basically, uh, six months ago, we have um, reading sessions on some important theories on the um, issue of multiculturalism and citizenship. We have um, looking around the issue of and studying uh, critically on the issue of uh, on, on the theory of multiculturalism, liberalism, communitarianism, republicanism, cosmopolitanism, and so on and so forth. And quite interesting to me is the participant of this discussion coming from uh, everyone across Indonesia. So we have a participant come from Madura, we have participant come from Salatika, from Surabaya, even also we have participants come from Australia. The basically uh, the uh, students are currently studying in Australia, uh, doing their master or uh, PhD. It means that this kind of issue 
are quite interesting not only for PMP, our our center, but also people uh, out there. We have conducted several um, focus group discussion with the expert on the field. Um, <clears throat> Basically, in, in this year only, we have like maybe more than 10 uh, FTDs. And now currently we are um, publishing uh, the critical reading on theories and also our FTDs uh, in the uh, proceedings that will be published and will be coming out, I think, this month. And then we are planning to have a workshop and publication next year. We, have, we will have international workshop on publications. And then currently we are working on <clears throat> our um, research project and then we publish uh, mainly in English. Uh, I hope that by um, mid of next year, we can publish our um, research uh, in English. Um, currently, there are um, two research that I can highlight that currently on the work. The first one is the research on the issue of religion and citizenship in Indonesia. And then the other one is um, looking at the issue of equality among different groups within the demographic framework, between theory and applications. The background of this um, topic, especially the first one, the religion and citizenship, is simply because we theoretically, if we see the relationship between religion and citizenship, is quite um, interesting. Some theories see that the relationship between religion and citizenship is um, it's not compatible, simply because the nature of citizenship is quite liberal and secular in nature, while religion is simply seen as something sacred, something defined. Um, and then with the background of modern nation theory, simply religion has no place in this kind of uh, secular discourse in our day-to-day uh, -day, uh, social, cultural, and political uh, life. But for others, for Pen Turner, for, for, for example, uh, he believed that uh, basically religion and system, the relationship is not simply uh, can be seen as something hostile towards each other, but the relationship between them can be um, quite productive. As I, should, I can show you, uh, I can highlight over here that simply religion offer a new kind of uh, bonding that goes beyond the primary one. Something that basically in line with the civic association that is imagined by the secular or liberal, uh, liberal uh, tradition. Um, <clears throat> therefore, working on uh, the, the trans framing, so I argue that basically we can say that the more religious society, uh, we have a greater chance to construct more democratic citizenship. But this doesn't necessarily mean that every religious aspirations will always go hand in hand with democratic citizenship principles, nor does it mean that the religious demand will always obstruct the process of creating more democratic and inclusive citizenship. In fact, and this is what we highlight in our research project, uh, the relationship between religion and democracy and citizenship is anything but simple. It is characterized by tension, negotiation, transformation that takes place over time and with different social and cultural and political contexts. Currently, our research project is looking at the issue of the conceptualization and practice of citizenship in uh, Indonesia by looking at the three research sites, Sulawesi Utara, Aceh, and Bali, and then basically one, key, one can be learned the practices of citizenship in this area to work a more inclusive and democratic citizenship in Indonesia. We believe that currently Indonesian citizenship is uh, pose uh, quite serious challenges that comes from uh, the, the, the fact that violence happen everywhere and then the minority group has been vulnerable in many places and then has been the object of discrimination not only by the government but also by uh, the, the people, the local communities that basically they have principles are different with uh, this uh, minority group. So we are trying to understand the relationship between uh, religion and citizenship to understand more how basically in practice we can develop a more inclusive and democratic one. Um, <clears throat> currently uh, uh, in our project, we are working with uh, some institutions. Um, uh, we have working with the uh, universities, State Islamic University, State of Jakarta, and not only with the universities, we can uh, we also work with the um, NGO um, in Jakarta that has been around and working on the issue of citizenship uh, um, specifically. So we have the Indonesian Institute of Citizenship, which is um, we call it IKI, Institute Keluarga Negara Indonesia. We have also working with the Lakpas NU that in the last couple of years are working with the min min minority group 
um, um, in um, Indonesia and then um, running a program what they call as social inclusion. That's quite important uh, to see and to observe uh, in our research project. And then some ideas are, um, are more uh, than welcome to work um, with us. And that's all that I want to say. Thank you, terima kasih. Uh, back to Mas Najib. Thank you very much, uh, Khairo. Uh, there was a, a technical issues in the hotel, in the internet, internet at the hotel. So I was disconnected for a few minutes. Uh, but uh, uh, we heard a very insightful, important, and very prospective research on the issue of citizenship in Indonesia from uh, your presentation. And uh, actually, uh, uh, Research Center for Society and Culture is not only having these three topics, but we have also smart city, we have research on the issue of languages, we have issue on... Uh, uh, natural, uh, what you call it, like uh, about forestry, uh, by, by, uh, Professor uh, uh, Herman Hidayat also here, uh, he is an expert on the issue of forestry. And also we have research uh, on the issue of law uh, and uh, other topics. But mostly, uh, I think the perspective that we use uh, in conducting research is cultural, and mostly also social scientists, uh, so, social scientific perspective or humanities uh, perspective. And uh, I, I think we don't have enough time to uh, for uh, Q&A, question and answer, but I'm not sure whether anyone that uh, wanna raise a question uh, in this session. I don't see any, is there any anyone who wanna, uh, ask uh, something about uh, uh, LIPI, about uh, Research Center for Society and Culture. But actually, I have uh, perhaps uh, one information that uh, in terms of the methodology of research, like our research on religion, is almost the same or perhaps uh, completely the same that uh, uh, with the methodology used by uh, the ministry, the research center at the Ministry of Religious Affairs, but uh, the different, perhaps, the topic uh, because of the similar. Sometimes the topic also have some similarities uh, between uh, several research centers in Indonesia. Perhaps because of that, uh, collaboration is needed uh, between some research centers, institutes, and universities in Indonesia. Um, uh, Thank you very much uh, for all uh, presenters uh, from our centers, from the Center for Society and Culture, Indonesian Institute of Sciences. Uh, we, have, uh, we have heard some insightful, excellent, and also prospective research on Indonesia. We have also a good publication, and, uh, and, and, and hopefully uh, we will continue maintaining a good research and a good uh, product from uh, Indonesian Institute of Sciences. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Khairo. Thank you, uh, Mbak Wicha. Thank you, Pak Dedi. Uh, thank you, Rani and Ibnu, and also all the audience participants in this session. Uh, I think that's all from me. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Mas Najib and everybody. Thank you, Mas Najib. Thank you. Terima kasih. Thank you. Terima kasih, Bu Heni. Thank you, Pak. Yoka, Yudi, dan lain. Okay, terima kasih semua ya. Pak, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Really happy. To be here. <laughs> thank you, Bajudi. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Prof. Herman. Yeah, Itu Bu Ija menangis. Terima kasih semuanya ya. Assalamualaikum. Salam. Berbahagia.